Hey up, go on nerd. In this video I wanted to talk, I've seen a few of these like videos of the vloggers I've been doing in the techosphere talking about like 10 years of me being a programmer, 5 years of me being a programmer, 15 years of me being a programmer, blah 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 blah, where people sort of talk about um, the journey, the programming journey as it were, so I thought I'd do my own version of that. Though I'm pretty old now, I'm 35, not that old really, just I'm an actual growing adult, unfortunately. I'm 35, so this is, and I really sort of started programming when I was about 15, so it's 20 years of programming, which is very, 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 very depressing to hear myself say those words, but it is what it is. So, um, essentially I want to talk about how I started off doing coding or coding related adjacent stuff and development in general and just talk about some highlights and showcase some bits and bobs where I can as much as I can remember everything I suppose it's not been that packed but yeah I'll try and remember as much as I can um, so in terms of my first exposure to coding that would have been when I was about, I guess, 14 or 15. I can rem distinctly remember um, being in secondary school and we had a very geeky friend called Stephen. He was in my sort of social group, a bit like an more of an acquaintance really, but he was in my social group. And I can remember him starting to talk about this thing called HTML. And, he's, and he even had a piece of paper where he'd write down some of this, uh, these tags and this code. I didn't understand any, what any of it meant at the time. And he was extremely well known for being extremely nerdy, so I sort of didn't really think much about it. I just sort of thought I was doing one of his nerdy projects. Uh, and that was that, really. But that was my, definitely my first, certainly, I think, my first exposure to HTML as a concept. I mean, prior to that, I had been exposed to computers via games. Like, I used to play Descent a lot. And, um, Probably even doomed by that time, I guess. I was 14, yeah. Uh, the next real thing that I got, started to get really into computers and started to spend more time on I was a big gamer when I was a teenager, so I'd play a lot of games like racing games like Screamer, I remember. He's all what the racing game I used to play. Descent, I was a big fan of the, the uh, mine exploration hostage saving game, which is quite revolutionary, honestly. Doom of course, and then Junicum 3D. Now, Junicum 3D was where I came with this thing called the Build Editor. So, this is not really programming per se, but it's where I started to get into using tools, which, for modding, I guess. So, uh, Junicum 3D came with this thing called Build Engine, Build Engine Editor. So, it was built on the Build Engine, Junicum 3D, and it came with this map editor that you could use to design your maps. So I got quite into that for a while. Like I used to spend a long summer, even summer days, yeah, inside just making these maps. And I sort of got quite obsessed with it. Uh, I did make one map of note that I never really uploaded it anywhere. So unfortunately, it's not available anymore. Uh, it's lost to time, but uh, I, had, I did um, yeah, go through a period of designing several maps. And that sort of got me into the idea of designing things on the computer. So it's sort of programming adjacent, I suppose. Then uh, I went, basically, I did my studies. I'd probably done some HTML in school, I think prior secondary school. I'd, I think I designed some websites, again, none of which are available really anymore because we're talking 20-something years ago. Uh, just some basic websites, like using, probably using... Uh, Front page, I think it was called. Probably just using that. Uh, in, it was primary in secondary school, so I used to go to the computer club there as well. And exposed me a bit more to HTML. Probably just basic HTML at that point, and it was old school HTML as well. So you probably still had things like marquee and tag and some other things. Uh, and then after I'd finished the secondary school, I decided to specialise in IT because it was one of the subjects I was better at. Um, so I decided to specialise in it. So I went to college to study 
and now I studied database databases we used to have you moved to using access Microsoft access wasn't anything that high end and um, so we learned a bit about that and then we also learned about started learning more about CSS so it was really a college where I started to learn properly about sort of front end coding so we covered basic CSS and the, Bearing in mind this is quite a while ago as well, so the standards wouldn't be the same. Uh, I learned HTML as well, so I made... The project I do remember making is I made a, a web, small website about Morrowind. But it was quite... Again, my skills are very basic at this point. Like I can remember it even used frames. So it was uh, very basic and I didn't really have an idea of what I was doing at this point. Uh, I sort of was alright... At college, I didn't excel particularly, but I did pretty good on merit pass pass, which is sort of like a B plus, I guess, the equivalent of in, uh, in the B tech world. So finished college, um, and then I went to university. So that was during the university. We studied like mathematics, the mathematics foundations of. And we studied all, all, the, all the stuff you get on a computer, so I applied computing course, basically. So I learned Java then, started learning Java, started actually learning about all concepts like object-oriented programming, about classes, about inheritance, inheritance, all that sort of thing. Um, so I found Java was okay to learn. We did little bits of JavaScript, not a huge amount. Uh, we did some Perl, which I found ridiculously hard to get my head around at the time. And we also did like stuff like Action Script, I think, which was around at the time. So I, my final year project, which I'll, I can probably show a little bit of, but it wasn't great. Was a was a multimedia project about T. S. Eliot. So basically, the idea was that um, you could read the poem and navigate through different aspects. It's like a multimedia version of the Wasteland by T. S. Eliot, basically. Uh, but I never really, I never really tested it enough, so it was never really a fully finished thing. But I'll show a video from like a sort of very rough presentation I did about it. I didn't really do that well at that anyway. But then, so that was that. And then, to be honest, uh, I did do some coding after that. Like I worked for a some charities. Um, one of the first major projects I worked on was a website for the Disability Information Bureau, which was a company, a charity that I worked for, and I just basically redesigned their website and made it more accessible. So that was quite an interesting project. Um, it's changed now, they've since changed the code, because it was like it was probably a long time ago now that I did it, but that got me learning about like well creating different style sheets for one page at, at first a little bit of javascript as well just trying to i think from what i remember but yeah um i got so i got those two jobs i got one job working for a so future jobs fund job because i had a bit of trouble finding a job at first and then and then basically went to and then after that, like it was, so I had these two jobs. I had this disability information bureau job, and I worked for a local mental health charity for a while, basically just doing IT admin support. So just doing PowerPoint presentations sometimes, doing general admin stuff, and also helping out with some of the youth workers working with kids, which was quite interesting. Doing making music sometimes digitally, making different video projects, that sort of thing. So I did that for about a year. And then my first real developer job, we just think. Um, well, I did a, a volunteer project for Congleton Museum, which I can, I'll show you now, actually. It's still up, still online. It was a WordPress site, so I started learning WordPress a bit, um, just getting my head around how that works. So I created a child theme for this um, project, which I did as a volunteer for a month. Uh, it's, sort of all right, I mean, it works, it's still up today, actually. Uh, it's quite, the design of it's quite old now, it just looks out of date, but I was still happy to get that one project out under my belt, I guess. 
um, in the early days after just university. So yeah, I did, like I said, I went out of, came out of university and volunteered to do a project, which I did and completed, and that was rewarding for sure. Um, and then like in terms of like the working for develop development jobs, uh, like proper proper jobs, I think what was the first one I had. I've had several really. So um, the first big one I had was working for um, a charity, a big charity in London. So they were called um, National Children's Bureau. So I was quite had a quite a lot of responsibility there. It's still the most well paid job I've ever had as well. I think that was quite a lot of responsibility. That was basically web administrator, web technician, web support technician, and uh, web developer all rolled into one. Web support officer was the official title of it, but um, and I'll talk a little bit about the stunning stuff I did before as well. But web support officer was the official title of that, and that involved looking after a bunch of sites, the hosting, the servers, and server administration, um, developing new websites. We used them Braco, so I was introduced to that technology, which I've not really used much since. But um, this is like a CMS. Uh, I've not really used them much since, but I had to learn that. I got ahead on that, so it's very challenging. But yeah, that job didn't really give me much experience of working in a team per se, because I was sort of, it's weird because I was in a, I was sort of a solo web person there, web engineer, web developer, so I was in the media comms team actually, funnily enough, not the IT team, which was quite odd, but uh, it was overall a good experience. I also did uh, e-learning module, developed an e-learning module while I was there, which I'll just showcase a video of it here. Uh, so I was using. I learned a bit. I'd, I'd learned prior to that about um, using Moodle, developing for Moodle, and also Articulate Storyline, which I'd used in a previous job, and also I used that software again in this. It's a good like e-learning multimedia software. So at the time, I was sort of a, I was sort of a mix of a some web developer with some skills and kind of like blended learning multimedia developer I suppose multimedia like e-learning developer which I've done for a bit one of my next major jobs in London was working for a friend actually so uh, I've been looking around for a job for a bit I haven't really had much luck after my NCB contract ended from what I remember basically my friend uh, had a idea for an application and he'd, he'd been working on with some other people it was basically a parental control app basically and I'd be go coming on to do the front end layouts and all that sort of stuff so this was actually my first exposure to using bootstrap as a uh, as a framework for creating these layouts so I got to learn bootstrap on that project uh, I worked with another developer as well so I got to know a bit more about where, how it is to work with another developer. It's mostly, the project itself is mostly coded uh, PHP, CSS, that sort of thing. So I got to learn a bit more about PHP, which I've not really touched that much since, but uh, I learned some about it from the guy he was working with. Um, that was quite useful. I was only there for a few months doing work on that, but I think three or four in the end. And then fast forward a bit, I did a lot of freelancing for a while, working on various bits and bobs, which I'll just show here. Um, looking around for projects, trying to enhance my knowledge, taking on uh, some, not all of which was successful. Like I, uh, I had some projects which I just couldn't find the will for, or not so much I couldn't find the will for, but we just, uh, I guess, burn out on some, somewhat maybe. But I was slowly progressing. Uh, I got a job in, I moved to Manchester um, after I'd been in London for a while. I uh, spent a few years in Manchester where I had a few jobs. I worked for a company um, who deal with like visual presentations, like sort of billboards and that sort of thing, and digital billboards. So I worked for them for a bit, and that's where I first got introduced to React. So 
had to learn React, which was very weird at first, like the mixture of HTML and JavaScript just felt really weird and wrong, even though it's like second nature now, with JSX, but at first I was just like, I just felt like, what is this? It didn't feel right at all, but got used to that, so I worked on some projects like, um, I created a version of Pong, I can't unfortunately show it, I don't have it anymore, but good workplace, so I sort of worked on, I had projects given to me, but also I could have the option to experiment quite a lot as well. So I worked there for a few months. Um, it's like junior dev, it's my first proper junior dev role, I suppose. I had worked as a systems dev in, Sto in, uh, in St Stockport for a short while before that as well, when I was in Manchester, living in Manchester. Uh, so that was working on a sort of business for business internal app. It's mostly using Bootstrap and JavaScript. And I think even jQuery at the time we using, which isn't really that used anymore, but this particular project was using jQuery and I think Bootstrap's how I work most on that side of things on that project. Which I can't show anything of obviously because it's all internalized. Okay, so fast forward a few years, I've uh, worked at a place called Printpix for a while, which is like a card customization, styling, uh, basically like a card company, but you can create your own cards and design your own cards and stuff in the software and use the applications. So in this role I was sort of, I had several different roles, I had to work on experimental projects for sort of how to showcase the designs. I had to lay out, we had this soft, this um, library we used for laying out the designs in JavaScript with JavaScript. So I, instead of this time I started to dive into JavaScript a lot more and started really trying to learn about more about the fundamentals. This is only a few years ago as well really. I mean obviously I've been doing JavaScript for quite a while but I never really felt like I had a decent um, mastery or a real deep level of understanding so I wanted to develop understanding of it. Uh, and working that job helped. Uh, I just developed a prototype, prototypal art viewing application using JavaScript, Vanilla JS, and A-Frame. I can show that here. So that, that was quite a cool project to work on, as well as like a virtual gallery I did using Play Canvas. Um, so that, that was again quite an interesting job because I was given some level of autonomy. Obviously, most of my job, my day to day, was like doing landing pages and doing emails, HTML emails, and all that sort of thing. But it was, it was, uh, and also the designs for the um, for the cards and stuff in JavaScript. But it was pretty interesting overall. So I left that job uh, after, f I think, four or five months because I basically went to Russia, which is where I am now, actually, to participate in an English camp. So I did that. And uh, it wasn't the end of my coding, though. Um, I just obviously like I was there for about two months. So I, was, I couldn't leave my job and just carry on and come back in two or three months. So that was also the end of that job. But I started to get a bit more into game development at this time, which I'd already been experimenting with before previously in, in Sheffield, like where I lived before. I was using experimenting with Unreal Engine, done, done a bit of like uh, game development with Twine, interactive fiction development, and we created a game called Glitch. Um, so yeah, so I started experimenting a lot more in the last few years, actually, with JavaScript games. Mostly as an exercise in improving my own uh, JavaScript abilities, but also because it's a cool exercise in itself to try and create something interesting, I think, with with a web language like JavaScript. And, and, it's, and I've got familiarity with JavaScript now, so I can sort of start doing more cool things with it, like the CubeGen game that I created, which which uh, 
be generating random out of cubes and you have to find them in this 3D environment using a frame as well. Um, and then for the last two years really I've worked primarily for two different people which is Desleon, cybersecurity startup, I'm working on an auditing dashboard. Not much work to talk about, I can probably show a quick clip of it but not much. And that's the React application, data visualization tool. It's been a lot of work, me and another developer worked on it um, for like two years basically. There's only two of us but uh, that's been interesting to do. And then I worked also for a company called uh, Sticky Pixels, working on a React application, so working on front end React application. I also got to create like a 3D preview. So we're basically with this game, Occupy White Walls, it's an art game, we can upload your art. And I developed the art upload functionality for that, so you can upload your own artwork into the game using art codes so it involved a lot of different things like connecting to stripe and uh, just profiles so basic profile system and everything else uh, so yeah i worked on that quite a lot last year uh, i don't work for stick pixels anymore i just finished working for them quite recently I'm still working with desley on doing the the auditing application but yeah um First one I was really proud of working on with uh, Cultura or Sticky Pixels was the 3D previewing. That was quite a cool feature implemented. So you can just basically preview artwork and also the overall just working on that application in general was quite rewarding and a good learning curve and certainly working for a team. Working with, so I've been working remote now for the last two years in both my jobs which has been suiting me quite well. There's many other parts I've probably missed out here, but I thought I'd just go over the main things that I've worked on. Uh, coding still remains something I enjoy very much, though sometimes I certainly get tired of it because it can be very frustrating as well sometimes. It can be, it's not always that rewarding, but when it's reward, when it's good, it's good. It's, and it's, it is hard work as well, I'll say that much. I've learned from 20 years of doing this thing that uh, it's not always a walk in the park. Sometimes you will get a little bit burnt out, so that's why it's important to take breaks as well. And uh, inspiration can come from more than just working a computer as well. Like the inspiration for the game Glitch came from just my love of science fiction and cyberpunk and that sort of thing, not just from, you know, computer science. So, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. It's been a video about. 20 years of being a programmer, I guess. Like and subscribe if you like it. Uh, it's been like a more of like a constant vlog.